you for tuning into The Boardroom, where we highlight important updates, discussions, and decisions from each monthly Atlanta Public Schools board meeting. I am Cherise Starby, and this is an inside view of The Boardroom from the October 7th meeting. Alexis Carrion, Chief Strategy Officer for APS, presented an update on the district strategic plan. According to Dr. Kirian, the vision of Atlanta Public Schools is to be a student-centered, high-performing urban school district where all students become successful, lifelong learners and leaders. The district has laid the foundation for this vision with the development of the 2012-2017 Strategic Plan for Atlanta Public Schools. Strategic Leadership, the Road to Excellence. The performance on the Strategic Plan is tracked through our balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard is developed from the strategy map and contains performance measures that tell us exactly where we will direct our attention. Each division's work includes how it will support the strategic plan and how each division will collaborate with each other to ensure student success. Today I'm not going to explain all of our performance measures as they will be presented in the annual performance report which will soon be released to you. The board will receive the report by email and it will also be posted on the district website for, pub for the public. The plan is the result of the collaborative effort between the Atlanta Public Schools Board of Education, superintendent, administrators, faculty, staff, partners, and the community. The thoughtful and honest input of stakeholders on the strategic direction makes the final plan a much stronger document that provides a roadmap to address the work necessary to achieve the mission and vision for APS. The plan recognizes the critical roles of all stakeholders to implement the plan with fidelity and to ensure that all achievements are sustainable. This five-year strategic plan provides a consistent, aggressive, and strategic structure of excellence for all schools and divisions within APS. The plan calls for the highest level of accountability, ethics, transparency, and engagement, and recognizes that students come first, and all decisions to be made are in the best interest of the students, which is the basis for the three perspectives. Number one, students, stakeholders, and the learning environment. Number two, leadership and talent development. And number three, financial and operational systems and support. The perspectives provide guidance for APS leadership and the development of policies and regulations, objectives, strategies, and initiatives to achieve the mission and vision. The three perspectives and 11 strategic objectives described in this plan will drive the thinking, actions, and investments over the next five years. Chief Financial Officer Chuck Burbridge presented the financial forecast before the board at the October 7th meeting. According to Burbridge, the revenue and expenditure estimates for October remain the same. But really, for as of this point in time, we really only have about one month of, of uh, revenues and expenditures to to gauge our our uh, our uh, updates on, which, as you might guess, really means we're we're not going to change things very much at this stage of the game. That's just insufficient information to to uh, to to be. Uh, making two greater changes. So so where the, the revenue estimate for, for October is, is remains the budgeted revenue estimate that we uh, started the fiscal year with, and also our uh, expenditure estimate for October is the uh, appropriation level uh, that we uh, received from the board as the uh, total amount of appropriation authority. Now, even though the uh, August material is, is really insufficient to, to make many Many judgments on we we have a few other items of information that we we look at uh, as we analyze payrolls in both in, in September and as of this time we're we're not seeing anything that just suggests uh, something that's unmanageable within the the policy parameters provided to us by the board uh, you know the the payrolls that are coming in pretty much as expected uh, the property tax uh, levy uh, the, the, the material that the uh, tax bills went out uh, suggests that we're still on track and that there's really no cause to, to make uh, uh, major adjustments or any, really any adjustments in the, in the overall estimates of uh, revenues and expenditures at this time. 
Policy KG has been revised to update the language and clarify the manner in which Atlanta Public Schools allows outside groups to use school and administrative facilities. The board requested a review of this policy at its meeting on September 9, 2013. The board accepted the revision of Policy KG for first reading at the October 7th meeting. On September 10, 2008, Atlanta Public Schools received a renewal petition from Tech High School. The petition was approved and the current five-year term expires on June 30, 2014. Although the school announced its closure on July 9, 2012, the contract is still active. Georgia law requires that local boards vote to close or non-renew charter contracts of schools that have not met their contract goals. As a non-operating school, Tech High has failed to meet its contract goals for the past two years. Having received no renewal petition from the governing board of Tech High School and given the voluntary dissolution of the school by its board, the board voted to deny a renewal of the Tech High School Charter. During the 2012 legislative session, lawmakers approved legislation allowing groups of charter schools to reorganize under one contract as charter clusters. KIPP Atlanta has submitted a petition requesting approval to become a charter or group cluster authorized by Atlanta Public Schools. While KIPP's cluster plan does not materially change its instructional program or the population it serves, cluster status allows KIPP to pool its resources and to eliminate the inefficiencies created by operating as six separate schools. As a charter cluster, KIPP plans to reduce administrative spending and offer more robust supports for all students in the cluster. Reorganization under one contract also puts all KIPP schools in the district on the same five-year renewal schedule. The Office of Innovation will continue to monitor each KIPP school individually and hold each school responsible for meeting its goals under the performance framework. Should any school within the cluster need to be closed, this can be done through board action, as is the case currently. Charter cluster status does alter the enrollment preferences at two KIPP schools, establishing enrollment priorities for students graduating from KIPP Vision Primary wishing to attend KIPP Vision, and for students graduating from KIPP Strive Primary wishing to attend KIPP Strive. The Atlanta Board of Education voted to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the KIPP Atlanta Schools Charter Cluster or Group Petition. The board also authorized the board chair and superintendent to sign any documents required for the charter school, including but not limited to the APS Charter Agreement, state charter documents, state or federal grant applications, grant budget forms, and minor modifications to the charter agreement. The Atlanta Public Schools Procurement Services Department solicited vendors to provide fire sprinkler maintenance and repair services for the district. Five proposals were received and evaluated. The board voted to authorize the superintendent to enter into and execute a contract with Cliffs Fire Extinguisher Company, Inc. to provide fire sprinkler maintenance and repair services. This contract shall be for one year with four one-year available options to be exercised at the discretion of the superintendent. This contract is conditional upon the firm's ability to comply with requirements set forth in the solicitation document. The estimated annual cost of this contract is $200,000. The Atlanta Public Schools Procurement Services Department also solicited vendors to provide asphalt and concrete services for APS. Five proposals were received and evaluated. The board voted to authorize the superintendent to enter into and execute contracts with Atlanta Paving and Concrete Construction, Inc., HEH Paving, Inc., Pittman Construction Company, Inc., Randolph & Company, Inc., and Technique Concrete Construction to provide asphalt and concrete services. These contracts shall be for one year with four one-year available options to be exercised at the discretion of the superintendent. These contracts are conditional upon the firm's ability to comply with requirements set forth in the solicitation document. The estimated annual cost of these contracts is $400,000. The Atlanta Public Schools Procurement Services Department solicited vendors to provide heating, ventilating, and air conditioning supplies for the district. Six proposals were received and evaluated. The board voted to authorize the superintendent to enter into and execute contracts with Air Gas Refrigerants, Inc., C.C. Dixon Company, H.G. Supply Facilities Maintenance, Johnston Supply and Train U.S. Inc. to provide heating, ventilating, and air conditioning supplies. The estimated annual cost of these contracts is $450,000. The Atlanta Board of Education authorized the superintendent to execute contracts with Global Teacher Research and Resources Inc. and VIF International Teachers in June of 2010. The original action item was authorized for $615,000. Additional recruiting services for international teachers are required, and the district is requesting additional funding. 
At the October 7th meeting, the Atlanta Board of Education voted to increase the authorized amount from $615,000 to $1.25 million. This represents an increase of $636,000 from the current authorized expenditure amount. The $1.25 million is included in the FY14 budget. The Atlanta Board of Education authorized the superintendent to execute contracts with several musical instrument vendors to provide musical instruments and equipment for the district. The total estimated value of these contracts was $335,000. Additional funding is required for additional equipment at this time. At the recent board meeting, the Atlanta Board of Education voted to increase the authorized amount from $350,000 to $425,000 per year to provide musical instruments and equipment. This represents an increase of $75,000 from the authorized expenditure amount for the current year. The Meridian Educational Resource Group, also known as Whiteford Community Program, has a long-standing relationship with Atlanta Public Schools, Whiteford Elementary School, Cohen Middle School, and Krim High School. WCP currently operates school-based health clinics in each of the schools to provide primary health care to students, parents, and the community. In the past, WCP has received a Health Resource and Services Administration grant to perform capital improvements to the school-based health clinics. The grant requires WCP to have a long-term lease agreement for the sites. The board voted to authorize the superintendent to execute a lease agreement with WCP. The lease agreement will be for five years. The terms will include a termination clause of 180 days for need by Atlanta Public Schools. The space for the clinic will be provided at no cost. However, the leasee will be responsible for the custodial services for the space provided, supplies, and any non-structural maintenance of the center. The City of Atlanta King Natatorium was closed and will be scheduled for demolition due to structural damage. The City has currently moved their aquatics program to King Middle School until a permanent location is determined. The City of Atlanta has requested a three-year agreement for the use of the pool. The Board voted to authorize the Superintendent to execute a joint use agreement with the City of Atlanta for the use of the King Middle School pool facilities. The City will be responsible for the maintenance of the pool and Atlanta Public Schools and the City of Atlanta will work together to address all security issues associated with the joint use of the facility. Students at King Middle School will be able to take aquatics classes at the facility. The Atlanta Board of Education authorized the engagement of a real estate consultant to dispose of surplus properties that are no longer needed by the district. Several properties that are proposed to be disposed of have not been declared surplus and are no longer needed for district purposes. The following facilities have been closed and are no longer deemed needed for district purposes. The Adair facility, Doan Street property, the Carter facility, the Old Dobbs property, the Wright facility, Claire Delview properties, the Collier Heights property, the Old Finch site, and West Atlanta. At the October 7th meeting, the board declared the property surplus and no longer needed for district purposes. They can now be marketed and sold by the real estate consultant. The Board of Education in Atlanta Public Schools held a special presentation for three APS students at October's board meeting. Lam Dang from Manor Jackson High School, Elante Porter from Carver Early College, and Odyssey Wilson from Mays High School were recently awarded the Legion of Valor Bronze Cross for Achievement by the U.S. Army Cadet Command. This award is only granted to approximately 100 students in the nation. This year, three of the five students recognized in Georgia attend Atlanta Public Schools. Also in attendance for the special presentation were retired Major General Jim Donald and retired Major General Ron Johnson of the United States Army. They were also joined by retired Lieutenant Colonel Robert Rooker, who is the Director of Army Instruction for Atlanta Public Schools JROTC program. Miss others distinguished members of the school board, I'm just delighted to be here and on behalf of the Army, I'm delighted that you will allow us to display our credentials right here in the middle of your school system, men and women who have excelled beyond the call of duty, men and women who we've selected from among us to represent us. And I would emphasize to the families and all those who are part of this matriculation to this point that it is not simply about preparing men and women to war, but it's truly about preparing men and women for citizenship for leadership, instilling in them the character that we need in this country to get the mission done. Members of the Atlanta Board of Education recently attended APS's Lowry Lecture Series. 
Ryan Cameron, host of the Ryan Cameron Morning Show on V103 and Philanthropist, delivered the keynote remarks for the 13th annual Reverend Joseph E. Lowry Lecture Series on Civic Engagement to more than 500 Atlanta Public Schools seniors and guests on Thursday, October 3rd. The lecture serves as a platform for high school students to listen, learn, and dialogue with some of the nation's outstanding community leaders and pioneers in their field. Past lecturers include Dr. Bill Cosby, former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. David Satcher, Judge Glenda Hatchett, and Mayor Kasim Reed. The lecture series was created in 2001 by the Atlanta Board of Education in honor of Reverend Lowry's 80th birthday. Reverend Lowry celebrated his 92nd birthday on October 6th. Now entering his 23rd year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ryan Carroll. They had no idea what was next. This is the only free education you're going to get. I think the, 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 the people on the, on the dais here will agree. Stakeholders are given an opportunity to speak publicly to the board each month at the community meeting. Let's take a brief look at a few of the night's public comments. There's been some discussion about a $300,000 surp uh, supplement to the superintendent's salary, the new superintendent's salary. And some people have even likened it to a football coach, like recruiting a football coach. This ain't football. This ain't a game. This is our children. And I even heard somebody say that the community folk who said that that $300,000 was too much, they called it, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, idiocy for the community to stand up and say that that was too much. No, that's community input. And when you get in high places and you look down on your constituents and say that their proposal, that they want the money used for something else, that that's an aberration, it shows how detached some people have become from the communities that they serve. But I, for one, I want that $300,000 to go to teachers. But even before it goes to teachers, I want it to go to the bus drivers that ain't been paid. I want it to go to the cafeteria workers. Because if the teachers don't come and the bus drivers don't come and the cafeteria workers don't come, this system will close down like that. Good evening. Um, my initial plan was to speak on agenda item 3.04 in international teacher recruitment, but after obtaining the rationale that explained the targeted area was foreign language teachers specifically with the outcome being an increase in the diversity of offerings K through 12 across the district, um, I'm backing off of that issue. However, um, as the representative of the Educators Association of Atlanta, we are displeased to hear that politicians are interested in adding additional funds to the salary associated with the superintendent. Um, I would like to express to the BOE that while we understand the rationale, those additional funds should be used in areas directly tied to students, as in print and electronic resources, or not even accepted at all due to the amount not being large enough 
to affect the salaries of educators who interact with the students on a daily basis. Educators who have not received a raise or step increase or a cost of living adjustment for the last five years. Um, again, I want to appeal to you all. We need to decrease the amount of politics in education. That's part of the problem. So we can focus on who and what really matter. I wanted to echo the point. I don't have to belabor it. I think Senator Ford and Ramon spoke uh, eloquently about the, the process for the superintendent search um, and the funding for the superintendent. I think we all understand that it's, an, it's a daunting task to take on leadership of Atlanta Public Schools. Uh, but I think one of the things that we have to talk about a little bit here is partnership. I'm very concerned when I hear board members not aware of what's going on by way of the superintendent search. It speaks that we are maybe not partnering well enough on the board, and I think that that's something that we need to be aware of, and I think that that's something that we need to correct. It, it definitely doesn't look good for board members to ask questions about the superintendent search when the board member only has really three main functions, and that's one of them. And so I'm very concerned about that. I wanted to give a kudos, though, to Mr. Hoskins um, and his staff, Alva Harding, uh, for partnering with me, um, and Mr. Davis, we talked a little bit about this last year, uh, last month, but I want to say thank you for getting some of the things corrected over at Sylvan Hills in their temporary spot at Parks. Mr. Petit seems very happy and pleased with the adjustments that are being made over there in the facilities, but I just want to note again that when we start a school system, equity means that every school is prepared, not just some schools, all schools, and so we have to make sure that that happens across the board. Um, and then my last thing is to extend our partnership to our workers with respect and value. Um, we've heard over and over again what's going on with the bus drivers, the teachers not getting their raises, and I think that we know that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu, and I think that we just need to make sure that we're valuing and respecting our uh, non-classified workers as well as our teachers and staff to ensure that they're at the table of decision making and that they have buy-in so that they are not disgruntled. I don't want, as a parent in Atlanta Public Schools, a disgruntled teacher in front of my child, a disgruntled bus driver driving the bus, a disgruntled cafeteria worker fixing the food. And so I think that we need to make sure that their voices are heard and that they are valued in this process. Board Chair Ruben McDaniel says the board has a lot of upcoming work around the superintendent search. Listen to Ruben's remarks regarding the October 7th meeting as he recaps important moments and outlines key objectives for the board moving forward. Yeah, over the next few months, we have a couple of things. We've, uh, you know, obviously, the superintendent uh, selection process will continue and has really wrapped up the superintendent search committee uh, report. Uh, looks like we'll have a November 1st begin to narrow down candidates. So certainly over the next couple of months, we'll be heavy into the superintendent uh, piece. We decided as a board to pay for the search uh, out of general funds. We'll be looking at other resources and how we pay for the superintendent salary going forward. So those will be some really key issues going forward from a board perspective. Uh, we also have some initiatives just as we uh, start the beginning of the budget season for next year already. Uh, we're really trying to get that uh, off to a good start. We're having a commission meeting in a couple of weeks to really talk about lessons learned from the last budget process and see if we can't get this budget process in a place where uh, the administration and the uh, community uh, really feels comfortable where we are from a budget perspective. Well, really probably the most significant thing to have in the board meeting was we had three of our RLTC cadets uh, named with the Legion of Honor Award, which is really a significant award. Uh, nationwide, only about 100 ROTC cadets who received that award. We had three of five in the state of Georgia. So we're really proud of our ROTC program throughout the community. Uh, it serves a significant number of our high school students and really gives them a foundation and discipline and really a place for them to connect. And so we're just proud of these students while going to West Point. So that was really a highlight of the meeting. Be sure to tune in each month for information regarding the Atlanta Board of Education and the important agenda items from monthly board meetings. The next board meeting will be held on November 4, 2013 at the Center for Learning and Leadership located at 130 Trinity Avenue Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia 30303. Stakeholders who would like to provide public comments during the monthly Committee of the Whole meeting should contact the board office at least one hour prior to the scheduled start time of the Committee of the Whole meeting by calling 404-802-2200. Stakeholders wishing to address the board during the community meeting must register in person at the sign-in table from 5 o'clock p.m. to 5.50 p.m. on the day of the community meeting. Community members must list their names and the agenda item or topic they wish to address, and they will be given up to two minutes to address the board. Thank you for tuning in. At APS, we are renewing our commitment to you.